This is a good one. I made this dress in under an hour. And I made this tank top and skirt in just a little bit more than an hour. Let me show you how to do it. You're gonna wanna try this one. Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a while since I've made anything from scratch. I've just been doing upcycling and it's been so much fun, but I wanted to share with you today my favorite pattern that was used in my classroom this year. Quite a few of my students made this dress, McCall's 7386. And it's simple enough that my grade nine students were making it and it was turning out beautifully. Like it's such a gorgeous, simple dress. This view is really, really stunning. And then also the tank top and skirt is also great. A couple of the girls made the skirt and it just is cut beautifully. You can make it shorter, but the shorter length is just sort of more, you know, plain every day, but the long ones are just beautiful. The cut is slightly mermaid, but not in a very extreme way, just really, really soft, beautiful swing at the bottom. So all year, every time one of my students made this dress, I was jealous and wanted to make one as well. So that's what I'm going to do today. So this is McCall 7386. So I'll be making all of these pieces today, but a couple words of caution is that the pattern only comes in extra small, small, medium. This is one of the size ranges. It only goes up to medium. And then the other size range would be the large, extra large, and double XL. So if you're not sure if you're a medium or large, then it's hard to know which pattern to buy. So one thing to keep in mind is that it does seem to fit a little bit bigger. I'm a medium, but you'll see that the medium ended up being a little bit big on me. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're choosing your size. The next thing to keep in mind is the fabric that they call for. For this, is the long full length view, view C in a medium, they say you need three and a half yards and you just don't. Unless you have a directional print or something, I can get this definitely out of two yards and I'll show you that. And the same for the tank top and the skirt together, I can get it out of two yards. But I had to go looking for a beautiful stretch knit fabric. It absolutely has to be a stretch knit. So I went looking and looking and looking and looking. And I even looked at Mood Fabrics in New York when I was there, they had a whole wall of stretch knits I didn't really fall in love with anything. So for the first time ever, I tried ordering fabric online with mixed results. I ordered two different fabrics online, one from amazon.ca because I'm in Canada and one from amazon.com because I'm close enough to the border, I can hop over and pick that up. The first one to arrive was the amazon.ca. I haven't opened the package yet, but I think that the print looks really, really cute. I wanted to get one that was cute to do the tank top and skirt for a daytime look. And then I wanted one that was a little dressier, a little more sophisticated for the full length dress. And I do not know what I was seeing on the screen, but the print is just so juvenile. Like when it arrived, it's not what I expected at all. So my first experience of ordering fabric online was sort of a 50-50 draw. I really do think that one is cute, but this one, no, I never would have bought that in the store. Anyway, let's judge the quality now. I'm gonna open up both. Oh, it's a little silkier than I thought. I thought it would have more of that cotton feel. It's okay, I'm trying to convince myself I still love it. It's much cuter than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be beautiful, but it's cute. Nice bonus is that it goes really nicely with those jeans that I just embroidered. So I think this one will be great in the tank top and skirt, but this one, you know, I never would have bought this. Oh gosh, it's awful. The feel is worse and the look is just, I mean, it would be cute for a little kid's thing, but it is not what I was hoping for at all. I'm gonna donate this one to my classroom. Maybe some of the girls will love it. It's got that nylon feel. I don't love it. This one does feel better. It really does. I'm convincing myself that I love this one. So I'm gonna try Joann's online and see if I can find one better on there. So I tried Joann's and there are 373 different knit fabrics. And out of all of these knit fabrics, I literally found one that I liked. What do you think of this one? Like at least the dark background makes it a little less cutesy, like a little bit more evening. And the price is good. It's $10.79 for a yard. So getting two yards of that would not be too bad. So right now, I guess that's 40% off. 
The fiber content is, it's a rayon knit with 7% spandex. So that 7% spandex should mean that, you know, the knit comes back, like it has good recovery. It's not going to get stretched out. And the rayon, it's not exactly a natural fiber, but it does have a kind of a cottony feel. So that should be better than what I have right now. So, okay, I'll go ahead and get this one and let you know when it arrives. So when I use a commercial pattern repeatedly with my students, I get them to help me put it onto hard paper like this so that they can just plunk it down into the fabric and trace. You can see that I got this easily out of a two meter piece of fabric. So the fabric's laying right side together and you can see it's got really big selvages all around the whole square of fabric. I think they printed in two yard sections. So with it looking like a selvage all the way around, you have to be sure that you're getting the direction correct. So I was testing out the stretch here to make sure I've got it going the right way. And definitely that colorful line is marking the lengthwise grain. So I made sure to have my grain lines parallel to that. The front pieces go on the fold and the back pieces are cut too. And then for me, I added about 5 eighths of an inch to the waist and tapered it back up to the top and back down to nothing at the bottom. And I traced them out with my friction pen and then used the rotary cutter. Once they were cut, then before I even picked them up, I placed pins in those center back seams. So before you even move it, lay some pins in the center back because you've cut it right side together, you're all set for your first sewing step. Quite often my students will say, okay, I'm done cutting, what do I do now? And the answer is put them right back together exactly how they were when you cut. So instead of flinging them apart, pin them together before you lift them off the table. So I'm gonna be sewing everything up today on my serger. The only things I'm gonna do on the regular machine are the final turns of the neckline, armholes, and the hem. All the seams are going to be just surged. And that is so fast and so beautiful. It's one of those projects that's going to make you want a serger. Now, if you don't have a serger, no problem at all. You really can just sew a double line. So you sew once at the 15 line and then once again, a little closer toward the edge. I'm just going to be surging on the edge. So I'm actually taking a little bit of a smaller seam allowance. So that gives me a little bit more wiggle room for fitting and whatever. But I know that when you see how fast this is on the serger, you're going to want a serger. You really are. And I know they can be expensive. You can pick them up secondhand. So many people buy them and then don't know what to do with them and then sell them. So try first to buy a decent one secondhand. If you can't find one, I looked on Amazon and found a brand that I trust, Brother, and I chose one that has really, really nice features and the price is reasonable. And so I'll put the link in the description box below. My serger, you're not going to be able to find. I can't recommend this one, my old Kenmore, which I adore, but it's 30 years old. If you can get a second hand, can more like mine, buy it. It's just the best thing ever. But I think the brother machine is going to be good for you. So if you want one, there is a link in the description box. The only other thing I'm going to need today to finish off the tank top and skirt is a piece of inch wide elastic that's comfortably snug around my waist. So I just cut this piece to be comfortably snug. And then when we get to the skirt, I'll show you how I'm going to quarter mark that and surge that right in. So this is going to be lickety split. And I've got my two pieces pinned. And on the skirt, I drew a line four inches above the finished edge. And I will probably cut there, but I don't want to cut yet just because I want to see the full length. It's just so pretty when it's full length. I just think I'll wear it more if it's shorter, but I don't want to cut it yet. I'm going to be kind of doing these in assembly line style where I'm going to be working on the top and the skirt at the same time. So I'm going to surge right down the center back of the top and down the center back of the skirt. And my serger is just set to a normal four thread serging. Differential feed is at one, stitch length is at three and a half, like nothing special here at all. So the serging has stretch built into the stitch and so it's not a problem. I don't have to do anything special there at all and it still can stretch. Okay, so these are the two pieces I just serged and now I'll lay them on my table right side up. Oh, that does kind of bother me a little bit. If the tank top is too big, I'll try taking it in so that that flower doesn't have like double centers. But anyway, that's fine. The fronts go right side down against them. And I'll just put a few pins and then surge the four seams, the two side seams and the two shoulder seams. Easy peasy. I really am trying these days to not overuse the word easy 
but this is a pattern that my grade nines use and they have really good success with it. So don't let yourself be intimidated by using knits, especially if you do have a serger. This is a beautiful project for you. That's ready to go back to the serger. And so here's the skirt. Same thing. Lay one down on the table, right side up. Oh, now this really, I don't like. I can't live with that. See how that edge of the selvage is showing there. That's a deal breaker. So I am going to serge that in a little bit closer because that is not okay. So it's just at the top. Oh, no, it is not. Okay, so I'll be fixing that all the way down the center back seam. So not a big problem, but I just definitely can't live with a white line going down the back of the skirt. I'll still pin this now and do all three of these seams at once. My front skirt goes right side together and pinning corners, pinning notches, and then pinning anything in between, right? There's a lot of flexibility in a knit like this. So if I just start at one end and pin my way to the bottom, there's enough give and play that, you know, I could end up with the bottom corners quite different. So pin your corners first, then pin in between, and the fabric will kind of fall into place. Okay, back to the serger. And then just a picky detail, I like to have the front up so that the good side of the serger shows when I push the seam allowance to the back. That's just me being picky. It also helps me to know which is front and which is back. When I get to the bottom edge, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I've got the front up and I'm serging the two shoulder seams. And I'm chaining everything together and then I'll cut them apart later. So down one side seam and up the other. Okay, there's all four seams surged nicely. And then the front side of the skirt is up and down one side seam and up the other. I'll make sure I can see both edges so that I know I'm not missing that bottom edge. It's easy to miss that bottom edge if you can't see it, but I don't want to chop it all off. So I keep the edges together and just make sure they're both going in evenly. And then up the other side. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go back down that center back edge. And if I look closely, I can see where the print ends. So I'm just going to make sure I chop all that off. Where the two little bumps are on my presser foot, those line up with the needles. So as long as I have this left hand bump over that white line, you probably can't see it, but I can see a little line there where the print ends. Then as long as I'm covering that with this, then I'm good. Okay, all better. Okay. Now I can do a little bit of fitting before I finish off these edges. And yes, I'm glad it's a little bit big because that center back seam with the double centers of the flowers, that was bothering me a bit. So I'm going to take it in down that center back, which I'll have to take it off, pin it, put it back on. But starting with a tank top gives me good information before I cut the dress. So it is quite big. I could definitely have gone down a size. I think I could quite easily do the small and I really am a medium. So that gives you some information about the sizing of this dress. I might want to take some off the shoulders as well. I think I will. And it's a bit gapy here here, but I think that once I take in the center back, it's going to take care of that. Maybe I'll do that first. I'm just going to pop it off, put it right back on and be right back. So can you see I've pinned down probably about three quarters of an inch out of both sides of the center back and about half an inch out of both shoulder seams. And it does feel better, but I think I'm still going to go in a little bit more on both side seams. Just above the waist though. I think below the waist, I'm fine. Okay, I'm happy with the fit now. And good thing I checked before finishing off my edges, right? It's always good as soon as you can try something on, do it and make any adjustments before you continue on. So this is good information, but you know what? When I cut the dress, instead of just going down to the small, I know it sounds crazy, but I know exactly what I need to do to the medium, right? Because I went out on the waist already. Now I'm coming in above the waist. So I'm going to start with the medium when I cut the dress, just so I can do exactly what I've done and end up with a fit I like with a little bit less tweaking. And on the skirt, I'm taking it in quite a bit at the waist and then I'll flare it back out to the original fullness at the bottom. 
I thought I was filming just now and wasn't there. So anyway, what I just did on the skirt was I kind of uh, marked a new cutting line and drew on it with my friction pen, cleaned up the line with my curved ruler, and then cut blending into the original edge, and then repinned my two edges. Now I can research the top half of both of those seams. So to take in the sides of the tank top, I just want to compare my pin lines and then make them the same. This is my new sewing line that's going to blend into the edge of the serging there. Blending into my serge line there. That's the new sewing line, so I'll cut the extra here, just that little quarter inch away from my sewing line. Now, center back, I'm just going to cut a quarter inch away from my pins. Now, at some sergers, you'd be able to just serge this right off, but most sergers would choke if you try to feed them that much fabric. So I think it's just safer to trim your excess first. The shoulder seams are a slight different because if I'm taking them in that amount, which is actually closer to about three quarters of an inch, now my edges here don't match. If I just sewed like that, my edges, especially at the neckline, are not matching. So instead of just sewing, I'm going to cut off the excess first so I can budge that over a little bit. And then I can budge this over. Now I don't want just to match up corner to corner. I want to match up sewing line to sewing line. So it's here where the serging is going to be. That's what I want to match. And the back is now a little bit bigger than the front. But look, that's easy, right? I can just give that a little tension and it's going to fall right into place. So back to the serger for all of that. And then we'll get into finishing the edges of the tank top. Okay, so first the center back edge of the tank top. Okay, and now the shoulder seams. And then this top half of the one side seam. And the top half of the other side seam. And then the top halves of the sides of the skirt. I'll try those both on just to make sure I've taken them in enough. Okay, the fit is so much nicer now on the tank top and the skirt too. They're both just fitting just how I wanted. So, so nice. They feel great. And the center back seam looks much better now too, having taken it in and got rid of the double circles of the flowers which was no big deal, but it would have bothered me a little, but I'm never gonna see the back, so that's okay. I'm going to be finishing the edges of the armhole and neckline in a quick way. Not the best way, but it is a nice quick way. And with a pattern like this, you really can throw this together in an hour and have a beautiful outfit to wear out to whatever event you might have going on. So I am gonna show you the quick way, but when I get to the dress, I'm gonna show you a way that I think is better. It's a little bit more elevated, it looks a little bit more pro, but it takes a little bit more skill too. So let's start here and then we'll build onto those skills when we finish the dress, okay? So right now, all I'm gonna do is serve these edges. If you don't have a serger, no big problem. You'll just basically again follow the directions which is turn the edge and I think just says stitch once but I do like to serge the edges just to give a bit more finish and to give a little bit more substance to that edge when I do turn it and sew it down. I think having that serge line is helpful and the stitch I like to use is is the lightning stitch. It's like a stretched out zigzag. That's the one I've been using a lot lately. I think it's really, really nice for hemming a knit because it doesn't kind of read like a zigzag. It looks more like a straight stitch, but it has a bit of built-in stretch in it. So you can just turn your edge once and use that lightning stitch. I'll show you on my machine. But for me right now, I'm going to take this to my serger and I just want to show you some hazards that sometimes my students fall into where they really can mess this up for themselves. So let me take you to the serger and try to keep you out of trouble. So when you're serging around a circle like these armholes or the neckline or even the bottom hem, you're serging around a circle, you don't have a corner to start at. This is where some of my students get into trouble. So starting at a corner is easy, right? When you have to start somewhere mid-circle, sometimes Sometimes what they do is, this is just a scrap that I can show you on, they kind of come in, take a big bite, and then work their way back out to the edge. 
And that, I see this so often among my younger students, this big bite they've taken out of the edge. And now there is just no way you're going to get a nice turn on your armhole or neckline like that. That just, you've shot yourself in the foot there. So instead, it's a fairly straightforward fix for that. If this is my circle that I'm kind of starting midway on, I just lift, get this in straight. That's all. Get it in straight so that I'm coming in and I'm really not cutting off anything. so that I can follow that edge nicely without taking that big bite out of it. So let's put that into practice here. And you can start with your easiest circle, which is the bottom hem. It's the biggest one, so it's a little easier. I'm starting at the center back. I can trim off all my yucky threads as I go. So I know this is the back, so I'm pushing my seam allowance toward the back. Also, there's the good side of my serging that'll show once that's pushed toward the back. Another just fussy little detail, I like all the seams to go toward the back. For the armhole, I'm going to start at the side seam. And again, I'm just getting that edge under straight, right? I'm not angling down into it. I'll look at my surging. That's the good side. I push it so that the good side is showing. That's how I know that this is the back because I had the front up when I was surging that. And then the neckline, I'm going to start at the center back. So one thing about turning your seam allowances always toward the back is that that means I get a straight seam here. If I didn't pay attention and if I let that seam allowance come forward, then this seam is never going to lay flat because the seam allowance inside is always going to have that twist to it. So keeping my seams consistently going to the back gives me flatter seams. that is done so all of the surging is done for this tank top so we're going to take it to the regular machine so now at the regular machine i have a universal needle in here and i've got my little scrap that i was practicing on so i'm just going to try out this needle and see how it handles this fabric there's that little bite remember that and so you can see how it makes it so hard to turn a good edge here like impossible mm -hmm. but my needle is good this is my lightning stitch and you can see that it kind of looks like a zigzag but when you sew with it it comes out looking pretty straight so my universal needle seems fine so i'm gonna go for it i often have more trouble on a cottony knit that's when a universal needle can kind of poke holes that stay, you know, the holes end up showing and running. So what I'm doing here now is just turning a little bit more than the surging. I don't want to just turn the surging because then you'll see that little edge, right? Can you see the edge of that surging? I don't really want that. So I'm turning just a bit more than the surging. Now, one thing I don't like about the lightning stitch is that it's slow and I don't like going slow. But anyway, here we go. So what I'm aiming to do is have this side, the right hand side of my presser foot running along the fold, the needle catching the edge of the surging. I want to make sure that my fold is nice and it's not roping or twisting. I make a good shape with my hands and then go. If it doesn't look good, don't sew it. To me, there's no reason to pin this first. You just end up organizing twice. So just keep that little turn consistent and go. Sometimes the surging kind of pulls it in a bit, which can be helpful, but you can also just pull it back out if you need to. Okay, so apart from a little bit of malarkey at the back tack here, I think the seam looks pretty good. 
So that's not too bad, right? It still has like, I wouldn't say stretch exactly, but maybe a little bit of give. And that thread is not going to crack. Like sometimes on a super stretchy garment, you can just pull it hard enough and you break the thread. The surging gives it stability and that lightning stitch also kind of keeps it nice and like flexible. It's not going to break. Good. So I'm going to do that to both armholes and the neckline and then a little hem. For the armholes, I do always want to start and stop at the side seam, not at the shoulder seam, because I don't want that back tack to show. The back tacks always can look a little funny with a zigzag stitch. One thing that helps though is if I hold on to my top thread, then it doesn't get so bunchy underneath. And just a tiny back tack helps. Okay, here we go again. Make a nice shape and go. Okay, same thing on the neckline. This time I'm going to start at the center back. Again, just to have that back tack just a little bit more hidden. And again, I'll hold onto the thread, the top thread, just so it doesn't get tangled underneath. So you can see the shoulder seam lies nicely to the back on both edges. So there's no twist in the shoulder seam. That's nice. So now just the bottom hem and all I'm going to do is turn it up a thumb width. You could definitely spend some time measuring and pinning and I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying I'm not going to. <laughs> thumb width is fine. And yep, I'm still on that lightning stitch. Otherwise I'd be done by now. Okay, so this tank top is done. That's nice. That was very quick. So to finish off the skirt, I've got my piece of elastic that is comfortably snug around my waist. And I'm just overlapping the two ends and back onto a straight stitch. I'm just going to sew back and forth. Now I'll take that elastic. This overlap is going to be my center back. So I fold it and mark my center front. Bring the center front and center back together and mark the side seams. Good. And then everything on the skirt is already marked because there's two side seams and a center back seam. All I still need is to mark the center front. So the two side seams are together. There's my center front. The elastic goes onto the wrong side. I'm going to pin each of those quarter marks. Now, on a really full skirt where the elastic just can't even stretch that full amount, this doesn't work great. But when it's just a slight stretch like this, it's perfect. That mark is going to my side seam and my seam allowance is going toward the back. There's my center front going together and my side seams going together with the seam allowance going toward the back. Now we're just going to surge that on, starting at the center back. And if you've never done an elastic like this, give it a try. Because if you've just sewn a casing and pushed the elastic through, that is fine. But I honestly prefer this. It looks a lot more professional. The elastic is never going to be able to fold or twist. This is kind of perfect. It does take a little bit of control, though. This method is not as beginner friendly as just making your casing and then feeding the elastic through. So here I go, though. I'm just going to be surging. I'm going to try not to cut the edge of the elastic. If I do, that is not like a deal breaker. But I just want to be surging the edge of the fabric and the edge of the elastic together. Once my surging is on the elastic, then I have to put a hand behind and this hand is at the pin so that I can stretch and bring my edges together. The palm of this hand is going to be moving that edge. So do you see what I mean? It requires a little bit of control. So you surge it in that stretched out position. And then I'm picking up the next pin and stretch. And you only need to stretch enough to get the elastic to fit to the skirt. I don't want to lose sight of that bottom edge. Pick up the next quarter point and stretch. And the last one. Cut off my serger tails as I go. 
So nice and even all the way around. There's no puckers. There's no gaps. Looking good. Back at the regular machine now, I want to fold that fabric, kind of wrapping it tight around the elastic. I don't want it to be kind of mushy and soft like that. I want a tight wrap around the elastic and then stick a pin. And I'll do that at all four quarter points. That nice tight wrap. And I want to keep it straight. I don't want the inside to be pulling offline like that. I'm going to keep it straight. Starting at the center back. And I'm going to be stretching this. So I think I'm just going to do it in a straight stitch. I don't really think I need that lightning stitch here. And once I do the back tag, then I can pick up. And again, the palm of my hand here can help make sure that's pulled over nice and snug. And pick up front and back and stretch as I sew. beautiful keep going keep that good nice tight wrap pick up front and back and go that's beautiful I, I think that's faster and so much nicer than making a casing and feeding your elastic through the only downside is if i made it too big or too small i can't adjust it now if i did make it a little too big i can go over it with a triple zigzag like that a zigzag 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 and if you kind of stretch it out and run down the middle of your waistband with that triple zigzag it holds it in a more relaxed position so if it is too tight that's what i would do if it's too loose there's not a lot i can do i'd have to kind of either just cut this off and start over or possibly like thread a second elastic through there's not a great solution to that if you've made it too loose too tight is a little easier to deal with so pretty right it's just so pretty and that was about an hour and a half and that was with me fiddling around with the camera and everything so once i make changes to the pattern i'll definitely be able to get this outfit down under an hour but it just it's so pretty right i am actually madly in love with it if i was going to a summer wedding which i'm not but if i was going to a summer wedding i would probably keep the skirt this long i think it's gorgeous i don't know when i would wear it otherwise but i have a few different ways i can wear this i can leave the tank top out like that which i think is fine it's kind of nice or I can tuck in the tank top add a belt and then it looks like a dress really really beautiful but then of course the nice thing about having it as a two-piece set is now I can divide it up and I think this tank top is gonna look absolutely dynamite with the jeans I embroidered in my last video right it's all that like flower power feeling to it so it's totally the right vibe for those jeans I'm on the fence about hemming the skirt. I'm not even going to hem it right now. I'm going to hem the dress when I get to that. So I'll show you the hem. It's the same thing that I did here exactly. But you tell me in the comments, do I leave the skirt this length because it's beautiful? Or should I just like bite the bullet, cut off four inches off the bottom and hem it so that I probably would wear it more? You let me know in the comments. Okay, the fabric from Joanne's arrived. It got here pretty quickly. Not as quickly as Amazon, but you know what? Some things are worth waiting for. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It still has butterflies, right? I guess I have a thing for butterflies these days, but these ones are a lot more sophisticated, much less cutesy than the ones from Amazon. It's so pretty. Like, isn't that beautiful? So I love that it has the black background. That's going to be just more like a little bit easier to wear into the evening. Feels a lot more grown up and the feeling of it is nice. It's beautiful. I love it. And so now I'm going to go cut the dress and you're going to see that making the dress is just as quick as making just the tank top, right? It's the exact same thing except longer. So this is going to be lightning fast. The only different thing I'm going to do this time is I'm going to finish the neckline and armholes in a way that I think is a little bit nicer than how I did the tank top, right? I'm going to be using a quarter inch elastic and surging that into the neckline and armholes in the same way that I do swimsuits, which I know sounds intimidating. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's doable. And I'll show you how I think it just makes the edge just so pro and beautiful. And of course, you can do the neckline and armhole of the dress exactly the same way we did the tank top. But I think that this method with the elastic takes it to that next level. Try it on a scrap of fabric. If you don't like it, you go back to the other way. So now I'm going to run back and cut out the dress. So my fabric is right side together as usual when I'm cutting. And you can see that when I've got them dovetailed, like the wider end, <laughs> look who came into school with me today. <laughs> 
<laughs> the wider end of the dress at the ends so that you're overlapping the skinnier parts. And so this is the medium and you can see it fits just easily at two yards. So as long as you don't have a direction in your print, you know, if, if you've got a print that all needs to face one way, you wouldn't be able to do this, right? You'd have to put them end to end. It would basically take twice the length of your dress. However long you want the dress, twice that length is what you'd have to get if you've got a directional print. So I'm back at home and now surging up the dress in the exact same way that I did the tank top. Coming right down that center back seam. And then right side together with the front. I'm gonna use clips this time because I think they are generally a bit faster. Okay, let's go. <laughs> So it's all surged together. I'm gonna try it on to check before I finish off the armholes and the neckline. You can see the back comes down like a good three inches longer than the front, which is really, really pretty. But on me, even with the four inches taken off, it's dragging on the floor. And I'm 5'4", so if you are 5'4 or shorter, this dress is gonna be too long. So yeah, that's four inches I've already taken off, and now I'm gonna take another one inch just off the back. It'll probably still touch the floor after I've hemmed it, but just at the back, which I think will be really, really pretty. But then I want it to curve to meet the side seam there. I'm going to surge around the bottom of the dress. There's my seam allowance, good side versus bad side. Can you see the difference? You know what I'm talking about? So where you see the two needle threads, putting that side up just because it's nicer. <laughs> By always surging with the front up, I know which is the back and I can push the seam allowance to the back because I know which is the good side of the surging. The way I'm going to finish off the armhole edges and the neckline edge is basically exactly the same as I did on the skirt, but with just quarter inch elastic instead of the inch wide elastic. So again, seam allowance going toward the back. I'm gonna start by surging that elastic onto the wrong side. I just want to get my needles to catch the elastic and now it's such a minimal stretch it really is just like just the tiniest stretch really and I just hold the elastic straight and then bring the edge of the fabric around to meet it so just the tiniest stretch and I would say definitely practice this on a scrap first. You might love the technique and you might not love it. I want this seam allowance going toward the back so I can see the good side of the surging up. I know that's going toward the back. So I'm working with a longer piece of elastic, right? I don't even cut it until I get back around to where I started from. Okay, so that's all the way around one armhole. I'll do all three circles like that, both armholes and the neckline. There is, I think, a special presser foot you can get to feed elastic in, but I honestly don't think you need it. Like this is not a chore to just feed the elastic in by hand. Okay, we are done at the serger. So now this is exactly like the waistband of the skirt where I just do that little tight wrap around the elastic. And I'm using a straight stitch and I just want to give it a little stretch as I go. And I'm aiming for that inside edge, but I want to keep the wrap tight around the elastic. Nice. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's easier than how I hem the edge on the tank top because you've got that elastic to just guide you. And when you do that tight wrap, it's just perfect. There, and it's almost like a swimsuit edge. It's just so amazingly nice. That is good. I could lengthen my stitch length. It looks pretty puny, but it has enough stretch. Like that is just a winner. 
I love that. But yes, I should hold that thread at the beginning so it doesn't get all mucky. The straight stitch is faster than that lightning stitch too. Okay, the whole top part of the dress is done. Do you love that? Oh my gosh, I do. Can you see? I wish you could feel it. The edge is just more substantial than the tank top and it's got that recovery. So there's not going to be any gapiness or anything. It's not going to get stretched out. It's got like the stretch and recovery, which is so nice. For the bottom edge here, I'm hemming it more or less like I did the neckline and armholes of the tank top with just that skinny, skinny hem because it's flared. You don't want to try to do a thumb width hem on a flare because you end up with uh, problems. Basically on a flared skirt you want a narrow hem. Narrow skirt you can do a wider hem. So you can see that sometimes as I'm going I'm not really catching the fabric. I'm catching the loops of the serger and that is fine. And I forgot to mention on the tank top that yes I did do a final press with my iron fairly cool like synthetic setting and that makes a nice difference on hems like this i think that'll be beautiful okay this is done and under an hour you gotta love that it's like my diy fast fashion okay am i right like this is a beautiful pattern don't you think two pattern pieces go in to make this dress that is it and that was so fast and I adore it. Like this is not just a take me out to dinner dress. This is a take me on a holiday dress, right? I'm so happy right now. I love my new dresses. So it was important for me to get the right fit, do that little bit of tweaking. This edge with that elastic edge is nice. I gotta tell you, that is worth doing. It makes it snappy. It's so secure and it feels really, really pro. I feel like I could wear this all day walking around on the beautiful streets of Italy or France and then still be able to go out to dinner in it. And holy smokes, this fabric would just pack like a dream, like no problem at all. So of course, a link to the pattern will be in the description and I'll leave a link to this fabric too from Joann's. Who knows how long it'll be available, but I do feel like when we're doing our online shopping, which more and more of us have to do, as fabric stores unfortunately are not surviving. I think Joann's is a good way to go or any reputable fabric store. The fabric I got on Amazon, 50-50. I did end up liking the one, really disliking the other. So 50-50 chance there, but overall I'm crazy about everything I made today. As always, thank you so much for being along with me right to the end. That always means so much. If you like this video, if you learned something, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot and I really appreciate it. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care. Cause I've been